um, pay attention. We're in resolutions. Mr. Randall? Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Joint Resolution 1019. House Joint Resolution 1019 by Representatives Weston Bridges, also known as Tate and Moreno, concerning the designation of a portion of Arapaho, Arapaho Road from Interstate 25 to Parker Road in Arapaho County is the Sardapot, Sardapot Armenian Ar a Memorial Highway. Representative West. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Pro tem, I move House Joint Resolution 1019, 1019 and ask it to be read at length. Whereas, this year marks the 103rd anniversary of the first genocide of the 20th century, the Armenian Genocide, when 1.5 million men, women, and children of Armenian descent were victims of a brutal genocide perpetrated by the Turkish Ottoman Empire from 1915 to 1923. And whereas, three years after the genocide's commencement, in May 1918, a group of genocide survivors alongside Armenian forces fought the larger Ottoman Turkish army to a standstill at Sardapat at the foot of Mount Ara Ararat, a heroic sacrifice that paved the way to the Republic of Armenia. And whereas, the establishment of the Republic of Armenia through the Battle of Sardapat enabled the congressionally sanctioned Near East Relief, which housed a regional headquarters in Denver, to optimize its nationwide fundraising that ultimately saved 132,000 Armenian genocide orphans. And whereas, Sardapat is considered by many Americans of Armenian descent as the pivotal event in saving the last remnants of their ancient homeland and has been depicted in arts and literature alike, including the works of our, our American abstractionist Zara Marnian, formerly of Colorado Springs. And whereas the Armenian victory at Sardapat is a universal inspiration to fight for one's rights without reliance on others, even when facing the worst imaginable conditions for survival. And whereas in February 1921, the Colorado General Assembly expressed unanimous support for Armenia, the oldest Christian nation and most martyred of the allies in the World War. And whereas this legislative body has recognized April 24th through numerous joint resolutions, such as Colorado Day of Remembrance of the Armenian Genocide, and authorized the 2015 improvements to the Capitol Grounds Armenian Genocide Memorial Garden, including the addition of the Kokhtar Mon Monument, and whereas it is the purpose of this joint resolution to keep the memory of Sardapat alive so that Coloradans, whose predecessors generously aided the Armenian relief efforts, can be inspired by the heroic victory against all odds. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives of the 71st General Assembly of the State of Colorado, the Senate concurring herein, that a portion of Arapaho Road from Interstate 25 to Parker Road in Arapaho County be named the Sardapat Armenian Memorial Highway in honor of Armenian genocide survivors valiant contributions in creating the independent Republic of Armenia 100 years ago, and that the Colorado Department of Transportation may accept and expend gifts, grants, donations, and federal funds for the purpose of the initial placement of signs to mark the designated section of Arapaho Road in Centennial, Colorado as the Sardapat Armenian Memorial Highway, and that the Colorado Department of Transportation may explore a cooperative agreement with the appropriate authorities of Arapaho County for the maintenance of the markings for the Sardapat Armenian Memorial Highway. Representative Wist. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Pro tem, thank you, members. Uh, you may be seated. In 1915, there were about two million Armenians living in the Ottoman Empire. By the year 1922, that number was 388,000, over 1.5 million people. Men, women, children sacrificed in a state-sanctioned plan to exterminate the whole Armenian people. Deportations, starvations, concentration camps, rape, unspeakable violence, mass burnings, death. 
This included such horrors as 80,000 Armenians in 90 villages burning, burned in stables and haylofts, children loaded into boats and taken out to sea and thrown overboard. Imagine that. Use of poison and toxic gas, illegal confiscation of property. And yet, this happened. April 23rd, 1915, 103 years ago last night, Red Sunday began, and this is when the Ottoman government rounded up and imprisoned an estimated 250 Armenian intellectuals and community leaders in Constantinople. 2,345 Armenian intellectuals were arrested and executed in the following weeks. And this is the start of the genocide and why we commemorate April 24th today as Genocide Remembrance Day around the world. These atrocities, members, are not just something, something uh, happening in history. Today, we look around the globe and see that these types of events are still happening today. If we don't understand genocide, what happened, understanding the root causes of genocide, remembering the tra tragic results, we are doomed to repeat history. So what's the price of indifference, members? What's the price of ignorance? What do we risk if we fail to remember what happened? Just last Friday, we all remembered the Holocaust. It's important to remember what Hitler said, to said as he rose to power, and I quote, our strength consists in our speed and in our brutality. Genghis Khan led millions of women and children to slaughter with premeditations and a happy heart. History sees in him solely the founder of a state. It's a matter of indifference to me what a weak Western European civilization will say about me. Hitler goes on to say, accordingly I have placed my death head formations in readiness with orders to them to send to death mercilessly and without compassion men, women, and children of Polish derivation and language. Only thus shall we gain the living space which we do. Who, after all, speaks today of the annihilation of the Armenians? His April 12th, 2015 speech recognizing the Armenian genocide, our Holy Father Pope Francis said the following, it is the responsibility not only of the Armenian people and the universal church to recall all that has taken place, but of the entire human family, so that warnings from this tragedy will protect us from falling into a similar horror, which offends against God and human dignity. Today, too, in fact, these conflicts at times degenerate into unjustifiable violence stirred up by exploiting ethnic and religious differences. All who are heads of state and of international organizations are called upon to oppose such crimes with a firm sense of duty without ceding to ambiguity or compromise. Members, these were mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, cousins. Think of the faces, think of the families, and think of the children. These were individual human beings and they were simply eliminated. In this building, 100 of us are called every day to speak for the five plus million citizens of our beautiful state. So in that spirit, I ask each of you who represents and who speaks for the 1.5 million we lost in the Armenian genocide. With this resolution today, you do, I do, we do. Thank you, members. Representative Bridges. Thank you, and one of the reasons this resolution today is so important is because those who committed this atrocity continue to deny that it happened. Great nations own their past. They don't deny it. They don't erase it from their history books. They admit it. They apologize for it. 
and they work to ensure that it never happens again. Great nations own their past. It is an honor to be invited onto this resolution. I'm proud that part of this road will run through my district. And if those who committed this won't remember, we will. Thank you. Representative Asgar. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. I rise in strong support of House Joint Resolution 1019. And I think it's important that we will be designating a piece of land and a piece of road that people will be driving on constantly, and they'll see these signs. Because I never knew about the Armenian genocide until I was in about my early 30s, and a coworker of mine who is deeply in touch with her Armenian roots, sat down and had a conversation with me about what actually happened, about what it meant for an entire people to be exterminated. I never learned about this. I never knew about this. And for that, it was just completely unjust. So as we work to change history books, as we work to make sure that our history books are accurate and tell all of the stories of all of the people, we need to find ways to be able to educate people about this issue. And I can tell you, a family driving down the road seeing this sign is going to say, who is that? What is that? And they may look it up. And they may educate themselves on what truly happened. So Representative Wist and Representative Bridges, for the education piece of this and for the people who have deep roots in the Armenian history, and for all of us to be able to accept and understand what happened. Thank you for bringing this resolution. Representative Rosenthal. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem, and thank you to the sponsors of this resolution, um, House Joint Resolution 1019, and I rise in very strong support uh, so members, actually a few years ago, I had the opportunity to travel to uh, both Turkey and Armenia. And uh, I, I remember when I was in uh, Turkey, uh, it was during the time of the Eurovision, which is an annual contest for uh, music and singing and performance. And I was watching it from a, a bar, and there was a performer from Armenia um, <clears throat> who was performing at that time on the screen. And I, I turned to a person next to me, and I said, you, you do know what that performance is all about, right? And they looked at me like, no, I have no idea. And I said, well, that's about the Armenian genocide. And that immediately stopped the conversation. And I thought, that is telling. That is amazing, and that is the reason why these types of resolutions and why we need signs like this to remind people why it is so important to remember our past. And then I also went to uh, Georgia after that, and then by road to Armenia, uh, because Armenia is still in a bad neighborhood. Uh, they still have neighbors who have closed their borders. Uh, so in a lot of ways, the echo of this genocide still in some ways lives on today in the tensions in the area and the, the war in the area. Um, Armenia is still at war with one of its neighbors. And so, uh, so when I was in Armenia, um, I had the opportunity to really see uh, a flourishing country, a country that is... Uh, new and vibrant and wonderful and trying to create itself uh, in, 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 uh, in this new time that it's in. Um, and, but what I noticed also is how kind of everybody knew everybody. Uh, it's like one big family. And so you can imagine uh, way back in, in 1915 to 1922 how the murder and the slaughter of so many people literally tore at the family of the Armenian people. And this is just like literally nobody had, um, had anybody who was not affected by this genocide. And of course, that's still the, the way it is today, where nobody in Armenia has somebody who was not affected by this. And so it's still the echoes of that injustice 
uh, that was done to the Armenian people and to humanity in a lot of ways still echoes today. So thank you so much to the bill sponsors for allowing us to hear that echo uh, from this horrific time that is also, um, we have examples of great bravery that we see at this battle uh, where, where the Armenian people were able to defend themselves and help create the modern Armenia that we see today. Thank you. Representative Neville, Mr. Minority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. And members, I just really want to thank the sponsors for bringing this forward. Uh, I remember going through Yad Vashem and learning more about the Holocaust and actually the folks we were there with. Um, many of them weren't even aware of the Armenian genocide. And it makes me wonder had if we could rewind history a little bit and if we would have remembered and, and your your words spoke really well to this representative wisp, but if we hadn't forgotten centuries ago or right before the Holocaust that things been different, I mean, we can't change the past, but um, we can certainly change what's in our control now, and that's that's learning this. And I want to thank you, and and I don't think you'd argue with me. You're much better half sitting over there for educating me personally on this, because um, I hadn't learned about this in history books, and if it wasn't for your efforts here at the Capitol, I wouldn't be um, aware of what happened. So thank you for continuing to bring this up and making it an issue every year. I strongly support this resolution. Representative Michael Sanjane. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem, and thank you, sponsors. Just a few short days ago, I stood at this well, and I asked that we make it our business to learn each other's histories. And um, Assistant Minority Leader Wiss, you have, you have stood up for your, for your history. And it is a powerful thing to do, and not so easy. Um, and Representative Bridges, for supporting this endeavor, it is what is the example of shared story and shared history. This morning I was reading a British newspaper, I like to keep up on the world, and um, they're talking about putting a Holocaust memorial outside of British Parliament. And the conversation that ensued is, can we, in the creation of a monument, get deep to the core of the racism that caused the genocide? And I think it's a really big question that we have to all explore. The article in the British newspaper was saying, this is the land that institutionalized slavery. And can we, in that recognition of our own history here in, in England, understand that we set deep roots for racism? And can we be surprised that the outcome of racism is genocide? That's the, the shift in conversation. That, uh, that's a conversation I can't even imagine happening 15 years ago. And where we are today to be able to take a, under consideration a resolution to designate a part of highway in memory of the Armenian community who was decimated. That shows to me that we are moving the needle on the conversation. That as, as my um, colleague from Pueblo said, someone will drive by and wonder, well, who is this Armenian person? And they'll, you know, not the person who's driving, but the person in the back seat, will whip out their phone and open up Wikipedia or whatever it is. They're gonna learn. And they're going to learn because of you and because of you. And I thank you for the opportunity to support this resolution. And thank you for your hard work. Is there further discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, oh, Representative Wist. Okay. Seeing no further discussion, the question before us is the adoption of House Joint Resolution 1019. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The measure is adopted. Representative Wist. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. I ask that the morning's roll call be added as co-sponsors. Thank you. Seeing no objection, today's roll call will be added as co-sponsors.
Representative West. Thank you, Madam Sp uh, Speaker Pro Tem. Um, th thank you, members. I just wanted to introduce some folks that are with us, but first and foremost, almost 29 years ago, I had the privilege of marrying into an Armenian family, um, and my lovely wife, Susan, is here with us today on the floor. Uh, Susan, it's wonderful. <laughs> But for marrying into this family, I wouldn't know this story. And my life is richer as a result of it. And I appreciate the fact that every two years, my children have gotten to go to our uh, extended Cartosian family reunion and hear from Cartosian family members about those that the Cartosians lost in the genocide and passing those families along to our children. And hopefully, they will pass them along to their children. That's how we retell the story. And that's how we prevent these awful things from happening. I'm also privileged uh, to have with us today the uh, uh, members of the Armenian community, including the Sardarapat, and I've been practicing pronouncing that so I would, would get that correctly, the Sardarapat Memorial Committee of Colorado. I'd like you all to stand, welcome, we honor you, um, and we uh, value you being here, thank you. Thank you, members. Thank you, honored guests, for being here today and for all of your hard work to make sure that we never forget. Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to proceed out of order for the immediate consideration of House Joint Resolution 1013. Seeing no objection, we'll proceed out of order to hear the resolution. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Joint Resolution 1013. House Joint Resolution 1013 by Representatives Kraft, Tharp, and Lee concerning recognition of the work of the Colorado Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Council and in connection therewith directing the council to redraft Article 2 of the Colorado Children's Code. Representative Lee. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. Uh, we move uh, House Joint Resolution 1013. Representative Lee. Thank you. Um, this amendment is, or excuse me, this uh, resolution is designed to uh, provide for a re um, codification of the Children's Code. The Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention on which my colleague, Representative uh, Kraft Tharp sits, has been working on uh, revisions to this code to make it make more sense and to bring it up to current standards to reflect the science of brain research dealing with adolescents. Uh, but before we move further on that, I'd like to uh, propose I move Amendment L004 and ask that it be displayed. L004 has been properly moved and displayed. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. Uh, so this amendment arose out of the uh, discussion we had in the Judiciary Committee on this, and we just want to change the language from directing that the code be redrafted um, to encourage that it be redrafted. And with that, we ask for an aye vote on the amendment. Is there further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Amendment L004. Over. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The amendment is adopted. <laughs> Representative Kraftart to the resolution. Thank you. So I am pleased and honored to be working with Representative Lee on this, who is one of our statewide experts around um, 
criminal justice, juvenile justice issues. So as he said, I've sat on the Juvenile Justice Prevention Council for the last six years and worked with them um, prior to that. And one of the pieces of work that we have been doing is re-looking at modernizing the children's code. This is important work. It's important for the legislature to be able to recognize this work and to be able to set some time frames. Um, this work will then come to the legislature for our consideration to be able to adopt into law. We ask for your support. Thank you. Is there further discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of House Joint Resolution 1013. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to proceed out of order for the Madam Majority Leader, one second, please. Um, we need to open. Is there a request for co-sponsorship, or should we open the machine for co-sponsors? Open the machine. Sorry, Madam Speaker, pro tem, I was so excited about the passage that I forgot to ask, and I now move that the current roll call be added as co-sponsors. Seeing no objection, today's roll call will be added as co-sponsors. Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker pro tem. I move to proceed out of order for the consideration of House Joint Resolution 1012. Seeing no objection, we will proceed out of order to consider the resolution. Representative Michael, oh, excuse me, Representative Michael Sinchenay. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Joint Resolution 1012. House Joint Resolution 1012, okay. Representative Benavidez and Michael Sinchenay, all Senators Crowder and Fields, concerning the Medicaid eligibility of individuals being held in a correctional facility but who have not been convicted of a crime. Representative Michael Sinchenay. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. Um, I move House Joint Resolution 1012 and do not ask that it be read at length. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. Um, what we stand before here today with is a resolution that came out of the Interim Committee on County uh, Jail Overcrowding. And what we're asking for is a request to be sent to Washington, D.C. to take action on the, um, the exclusion for inmates under Medicaid. Uh, we are finding that we are in a, a place where an individual might be taken into custody and in the innocent until proven guilty part of the story, they're being held and yet they have lost their Medicaid benefit because of a nuance in Social Security. And there is an action on the table and we are asking Congress to take that action. Representative Benavidez. Thank you, Madam um, Chair Pro Tem. Speaker Pro Tem. Speaker Pro Tem. <laughs> um, members, uh, as Representative Michelson Janay uh, indicated, we had a interim committee on overcrowding in the jails. And what we were hearing from the counties is that there are so many people that are coming in that are ill, whether it is mental illness, whether it is substance abuse, or whether it's other chronic illnesses that they just may have. And the counties are being overwhelmed with the medical costs to take care of these people. Because under the Federal Social Security Act, if you are incarcerated, you are not eligible for Medicare or Medicaid. So the people that say you're on um, SSI, Supplemental Social Security Income, you, who get Medicaid, you're not eligible for that once you're incarcerated. Um, this is a problem that's not going on only in Colorado, but it's all across the country. And these costs are staggering. We heard from Arapahoe County, and um, their costs were roughly um, four million, 20, no, they, they were close to four million dollars, take that, to, for medical costs. And some of that 
was for people eligible for Medicaid or Medicare, but they could not bill the government to get to recuperate those costs. In the federal Congress, there is a bill that was introduced in January of 2017. It's H.R. 165. It's called Restoring the Partnership for County Health Care Costs Act of 2017. That was referred to a committee in January of 2017, but it has not moved anywhere. It has not had a hearing. And what the bill does in Congress, it amends the different parts of the Social Security Act to allow otherwise eligible individuals who are in custody um, pending charges. These are people who have not been convicted. They've not been tried yet. They're just pretrial detainees. But it allows them to receive so SSI, Medicare, Medicaid, or CHIP benefits while they're incarcerated. And so we, this resolution, it will be sent to our entire congressional delegation, urging them to support this bill and push for its enactment. Um, we think it's a modest request, and it is supported by um, the counties, um, CCI, and all the counties and the sheriffs. So we hope that you would also join us in supporting this resolution. Is there further discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of House Joint Resolution 1012. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The resolution passes. Mr. Randall, please open the machine for co-sponsors. Please, please close the machine. Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. I've moved to proceed out of order for the consideration of third reading of bills, final passage. Seeing no objection, we will go into third reading. All right, with that, that takes us to third reading of bills, final passage. Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to lay over House Bill 1011 till April 26th. All right, seeing no objection, HB 1011 will be laid over. It takes us to House Bill 1212. Mr. Randall, please read the title. House Bill 1212, Representatives Kennedy and Landgraf, House Senator Kapalos, concerning the licensure of freestanding emergency departments and in connection there with making an appropriation. Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the passage of House Bill 1212 on third reading and final passage. Question before us is the passage of House Bill 1212 on third reading and final passage. Mr. Randall, please open the machine. And members, please proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 35 yes votes, 30 no votes, and, and that's it. House Bill 1212 is passed on third reading and final passage. Usually we have people that are excused. Uh, with that, co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1310. House Bill 1310, Representatives Coleman and Covarrubia, South Center Fields, concerning the creation of a pilot program for emergency employment support services. Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the passage of House Bill 1310 on third reading and final passage. The question before us is the passage of House Bill 1310 on third reading and final passage. Mr. Randall, please open the machine, and members, please proceed to vote.
Representative Langer. Please close the machine. With 37 yes votes, 28 no votes, House Bill 1310 is passed. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of Senate Bill 68. Senate Bill 68 by Senator Cook, House of Van Winkle and Bridges concerning criminalizing false reports. Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the passage of Senate Bill 68 on third reading and final passage. The question before us is the passage of Senate Bill 68 on third reading and final passage. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please proceed to vote. Please, oh, Representative Humphrey. Please close the machine. With 64 yes votes, one no vote, Senate Bill 68 is passed. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, oh, Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to lay over House Bill 1368 till April 26. Seeing no objection, House Bill 1368 will be laid over. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1320. House Bill 1320, Rose from Bowen, also Senator John, concerning a reduction in regulation of large market taxi cab service from regulation to common carry to regulations of motor carrier passengers. Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the passage of House Bill 1320 on third reading and final passage. The question before us is the passage of House Bill 1320 on third reading and final passage. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please proceed to vote. Representative Lantine and Representative Salazar. Please close the machine. With 64 yes votes, one no vote, House Bill 1320 is passed. Co-sponsors. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1361. House Bill 1361, Representative Jackson Valdez, also Senator Williams, concerning expanded eligibility for a veteran of the Vietnam War specialty license plate. Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the passage of House Bill 1361 on third reading and final passage. Question before us is passage of House Bill 1361 on third reading and final passage. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please proceed to vote. Represent Buck and Represent Valdez. Please close the machine. 
With 59 yes votes, six no votes, House Bill 1361 is passed. Co-sponsors. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Members, we are in third reading. It's getting pretty loud in the back. Can we please have your attention? <laughs> Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1362. House Bill 1362, Representative Arno, Senator Tate, concerning membership expansion of the Colorado Task Force on Drunk and Impaired Driving. Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the passage of House Bill 1362 on third reading and final passage. The question before us is passage of House Bill 1362 on third reading and final passage. Mr. Randall, please open the machine and members, please proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 40 yes votes, 25 no votes, House Bill 1362 is passed. Co-sponsors. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Randall, please read the title of House Bill 1297. House Bill 1297, Rose Pedersen, Winter and Pedersen, all Senator Donovan concerning companies who plan to proactively address the anticipated impacts on Colorado of global climate change and in connection there with making an appropriation. <laughs> Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move for the passage of House Bill 1297 on third reading and final passage. Question before us, passage of House Bill 1297 on third reading and final passage. Ms. Durano, please open the machine and members, please proceed to vote. Representative Humphrey. Please close the machine. With 36 yes votes, 29 no votes, House Bill 1297 is passed. Co sponsors. Co sponsors. Please close the machine. Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to lay over the balance of the calendar till later today. All right, seeing no objection, the balance of the calendar will be laid over until later today. 
Madam Majority Leader Becker. Announcements. Announcements. Sure. Announcements and introductions. Madam Majority Leader Becker. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We will be coming back to the floor at 4 o'clock today. There will be a call of the House. We expect to work through a lot of the second reading calendar, including the bills that were read um, through appropriations today. So please be prepared and please be back here at 4 o'clock. All right. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, with that, announcements and introductions. Representative Benavides. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, members, earlier today, and they're walking around the Capitol, we were visited by Second Creek Elementary School in um, my district, and they are here with their teacher, Maureen Fuerte de Otto, and there's four classes from Second Creek Elementary. So if you see them, please say hello. They were up in the gallery a little while ago. Thank you. Great. Um, and members, we will read across the desk and reports of committees of reference after announcements and introductions. Representative Kreftar. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Business Affairs and Labor Committee, we've got two bills on today, House Bill 1383 and Senate Bill 209. See you at 1.30. Representative Singer. Thank you, Madam Speaker. House Public Health and Human Services Committee, we will see you at 1.30 and we will be hearing the same four bills that have been on your calendar, uh, 1219, 1380, 1390, and 1363. Looking forward to seeing you all at 1.30. Representative Janaw. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Health Insurance and Environment, we will meet at 1045 down in room 107. Further announcements or introductions? Representative Foote. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This announcement for tomorrow for State Affairs, actually, we're going to be in room 271 tomorrow afternoon, State Affairs, and uh, plan on being there for a while. Uh, it's going to be a long night. Uh, room 271. Thank you. Representative Liston. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, members, you know, uh, it's kind of a dreary, uh, cold, rainy day uh, today, and we've, uh, we've heard some somber uh, memorials and so forth. So uh, I want to brighten everybody's day uh, here. Um, I have today's good news economic report. We have some great news. In fact, this news is from the uh, Pueblo Chieftain, though it's actually uh, statewide. Uh, it was announced on Friday that wages in the state are now r rising at a faster clip based, uh, based on employment data that was just released by the Colorado Department of Later, Labor. Colorado's average wage was up 4.2% from March a year ago. Uh, compared to the rest of the nation, I'm quoting, compared to the rest of the nation, I think we're in a very strong spot, said Ryan Gedney, the chief economist for the Department of Labor. In March, Colorado added 5,400 non-farm payroll jobs, and the state added an additional 9,200 payroll jobs in February. Colorado's job, uh, jobless rate held steady at an adjusted rate of 3% for the seventh month in a row. Pueblo's employment rate actually fell from 4.9% to 4.4%, which is great for Pueblo. Colorado's uh, faster wage growth reflects an increase in the number of jobs in higher paying sectors, such as construction, and the oil and gas industry, um, which gave a, a, a boost in workers' pay, said our senior economist. Uh, economists view the increase as a positive sign after years, years of weak economic growth over the Obama years and would be the strongest growth since 2006 and 2007. Aren't we glad that we live in a strong economy here in Colorado? Let's celebrate Colorado's economic resurgence. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Order, order, please. Further announcements or introductions? Any further announcements or introductions? Seeing none, reports of committees of reference. 
Committee on Appropriations. After consideration of the merits, the appearance the following House Bill 1309 be amended as follows, and as amended be further the committee a whole favor recommendation. House Bill 1367 be amended as follows, and as amended be further the committee a whole favor recommendation. House Bill 1412 be further the committee a whole favor recommendation. Senate Bill 85 be amended as follows, and as amended be further the committee a whole favor recommendation. Senate Bill 158 be amended as follows, and as amended be further the committee a whole favor recommendation. And members, you are free to leave. We have just a couple other things to read across the desk. Printing report. Chief Clerk, report. Printing following. report will be printed in the journal. Message from the Senate. Madam Speaker, the Senate has passed on third Message reading. Message from the Senate will be printed in the journal. A message from the revisor. We here with transmit. Without. Message from the revisor will be printed in the journal. All right, with that, thank you, Mr. Randall. Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that the House stand in recess till 1 o'clock today. All right, seeing no objection, the House will stand in recess until 1 p.m. today.